Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to continue taking another one of the solutions for the theta function, the theta function representing the zenith direction on the motion of the electron in the hydrogen atom. In this case, we're going to assume that L is equal to 2 and M sub L is equal to 0. Going down the table, we find that right over here, and notice that we expect this to be the solution to that particular arrangement of the angular momentum quantum number and the magnetic angular momentum quantum number. So what we can then do is we can realize, if we look back a few videos ago, that the solution in when we replace the cosine of theta by x, we have the solution written as 1 half 3x squared minus 1 that came out of solving the differential equation using the Legendre polynomials. And then we can say that if we have another constant that we add to that, or we multiply the solution by the other constant, then we'll have to normalize that to find the exact value of the constant in front. We'll do that later. And if we then convert that to the solution in terms of theta, this is what the solution should look like by replacing x by the cosine of theta. Now, to show that this is indeed the solution to the differential equation, we're going to take this and plug it into the original differential equation that was determined by solving for the theta function. And we're going to show that the left side then equals the right side. So what we've done is we replace the function here by 1 half 3 times the cosine square minus 1. And the same over here, we replace the function by that quantity. Now we're going to try to work this out and show that the left side equals the right side. So first, let's go ahead and take the derivative of this. So when we do, we get the following, and then we're going to multiply that through. So we have 1 over the sine of theta times the derivative of what's going to be inside the parentheses here. So we have the sine of theta times the derivative of this. So we can already take the 1 half out and put it over here. So I'm going to take this 2 and place it over here. Then we have, a, or matter of fact, you know what? I'm not going to do that because I just realized if I take the derivative here, I take the exponent, bring it up front, the 2's will then cancel, and we're left with 3 times the cosine of theta times the derivative of the cosine of theta, which is the minus sine of theta, times the derivative of the negative 1, of course, is 0. Then we can close the parentheses. Over here, we have 1 half times 2. That cancels, so we're left with a 3. And we multiply that out, so we get plus 9 times the cosine square of theta minus 3 equals 0. All right. Now, we can combine these terms, and we'll have to take the derivative again. So we get 1 over the sine of theta times the derivative with respect to theta of... Uh, the negative can go in front, so we'll get rid of the negative. We'll end up with the 3 times the cosine of theta times the sine squared of theta. And then we still have plus 9 times the cosine squared of theta minus 3 equals 0. Okay, now we're ready to take the derivative. Uh, to make things easy, I may want to take the 3 and put it in front. So let me make this a negative 3 here, like that. So moving the 3 out. Taking the derivative of this, that's a product. So we have minus 3 divided by the sine of theta. And we have the ddt of, well, actually, since I'm taking the derivative, I no longer need this. This is going to go away. All right, so we get the first, which is a cosine of theta, times the derivative of the second, which is times 2 sine theta. And the derivative of the sine is a cosine of theta plus the second, which is the sine square of theta, times the derivative of the first. Now that would be, uh, let's see, that would be minus sine, minus sine of theta, like this. And I think that will finish that. And then plus 9 times the cosine square of theta minus 3. Okay, all right, let's see here. Now let's simplify that and see what we get. So we have a minus... Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait to that. Um, well, actually, before I simplify, you know what? This sign will cancel out this sign and this sign. We still have a negative 1 there. Okay, that looks better. And now we have, multiplying this through, minus 3 times 2, that would be a minus 6 times the cosine square of theta. And the minus 3 times that, that gives us plus 3 times the sine square of theta. 
Okay, and then we get plus nine times the cosine square of theta, n minus three, and of course, I should still have equals zero. Okay, now we have a minus six and a plus nine, so we can simplify that. So we end up with three times the sine square of theta, plus three times the cosine square of theta, minus three equals zero. And here, if you factor out a three, we have the sine square of theta plus the cosine square of theta, that's equal to one. So it ends up with three minus three equals zero, or of course, zero equals zero, which means that, yes, indeed, when we have the case where L equals two and M sub L equals zero, then this is the solution. We plug that into the differential equation and we see that it satisfies the differential equation, which means that, yes, it satisfies it's one of the solutions. All we have left to do now is find out, multiply that solution times an arbitrary constant A and then normalize it. We then integrate so that the probability will equal one and that then allows us to find the constant in front of the solution. So we'll do that on the next video. And that's how it's done.